And I don't know where you've been, but you're gonna respect this courtroom. My life has proven that it's not about where you come from, it's about where you're going. From a jailed youth who had my record expunged to becoming the youngest judge elected. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. In just 15 years. Ma'am, let me know when you want to go to rehab. Otherwise, I think you're a crackhead. Absolutely not. My goal is to inspire others to overcome their obstacles. You don't need him and his little raggedy roommate. Thank you. All while having a little fun on Mathis Court. You look like you ready to lie right the first <laughs> word out your mouth. <laughs> this is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Claire Grover is suing Charlotte Riker in the amount of $650. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. May be seated. Miss Grover claims her keys needed to be replaced after they were lost and says Miss Riker is to blame because they were in a purse that was thrown out of a car window. State your name? Claire Grover. Ma'am? Charlotte Riker. All right. And you are suing Ms. Riker for $650, alleging she owes you this money for the cost of replacing keys? Yes. Start with you. I am suing her because she threw my mom's purse out of her car with my car key and house key in it. Okay. And you weren't able to retrieve it? Well, I had to call a locksmith and replace my house key for $150. And the next day, I had to go to a dealership and get my car key for $600. So when she threw the purse out, your mother didn't see the keys fly out of the purse? Well, no, because she was, on the, she was on the highway and she threw her purse out in the snow and everything went out her purse into the snow. Everything? Everything. Meaning she didn't she, pick anything up? Well, my mother, she picked up what she can find, what she can see, her wallet and her phone and things like that, but oh. she didn't find the keys. Let me get some background from you on this. I just got angry. I had been putting up with her the whole day, listening to her disrespect me and brag and not let me speak. And I was the one who picked her up. Where were you all at? I don't understand. We were at a casino. We were having a girls' night. Oh, I took her to the casino. you losing your money and get mad with her. It ain't her fault because you losing your money. Did you lose? Yeah, I lost well, yeah, some. You was looking for somebody to be angry with. Be no, angry with no, yourself. Your Honor. So what was she doing? I wanted to like have a girls' night so we could talk to each other and share, you know, get caught up because we hadn't seen each other in a few months. And all she wanted to talk about is her daughter and her daughter this and her daughter's so rich and her daughter's doing so well and her daughter. And I had a new granddaughter that I wanted to talk about. She didn't let me say anything. It was her and her. Where and were you her all, all at doing this talk? Well, we, we stopped and we had uh, dinner at the buffet first. Okay. So we were talking over that, but I didn't really get a word in edgewise. And then we went to play the slots. You think people get mad at me, son? Because you've been, you, all your life you've been around me. I don't stop talking. People get mad because I talk too much. <laughs> I think I talk too much. I never say anything, but I feel a little. I'm not asking you about you. I said people. <laughs> yeah. You don't, need no, to, no. you don't need to refer to yourself about how you feel about your dad. I mean, no, let's say no. I think they do, and I think it's a bad habit. I do too. <laughs> I think it's a bad habit, and so I do understand how you can get irritated because I believe I irritate people sometimes when I don't give them a chance to talk and I just go on and on and on. So I understand that. However, what did that lead to? You all were at the buffet. She's doing too much talking. Mm -hmm. You went to the casino area, obviously. What were you playing? Slots, quarters, right. and nickels. And therefore, you all didn't have to talk to each other. Not really, no. Right. And let, that's probably, how, or if you did, that's why you lost your money. Um, I actually had plenty of money left. She ran out of money, but so she started complaining because she wanted to go home because she didn't have any more money to play with. And so you're, you're winning, and uh, she wants to stop. Well, you I didn't from win winning. that much, but okay. yeah. But just at that moment, you're still winning. Right. All right. Well, she was ready to leave, mm -hmm. so I said fine because I didn't want to lose any more. We got in the car, and she starts talking about her daughter again, and it's this about her daughter and that about her daughter and blah blah blah. And never got a word in edgewise, and it was just getting on my nerves. Did you say something about it? Did I tried say, to. I tried to. Oh my goodness, let me get a word in. Yeah, Before but she didn't want really her out of the car. Just your mother here? Yes. Let me hear from you, ma'am. You want to speak? Yes. Um... All right, come on up, ma'am. 
State your name. Edna Grover. All right. What do you want to tell me about the incident that night prior to you uh, jumping out the car or her throwing you out or whatever happened there? Well, I was house sitting for my daughter, so she had given me the keychain that had her car keys and her house keys on it. Then, uh, you know, Charlotte invited me out for a girls' night out at the casino. It sounded like a lot of fun, and we were having fun. You know, maybe I had been talking about my daughter, but she was also talking about her granddaughter. I don't know why she's acting as though I'm the only one who talks. She says you didn't give her opportunity to talk much, and it irritated her. And I could see that being the case if someone doesn't give the other an opportunity. Coming up on Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. You've never heard that you talk too much. No. Your daughter looking like, she looking at you she like, you yeah, she talks too much mama. sometimes. I told you. Sometimes. Well, sometimes. And later. Since you want to come in here and open the door about being handcuffed in some freak activity. Come on, freaky dicky. All what right. else you want to tell me? <laughs> If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6870. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Mathis Court is back with the case of Claire Grover, who is suing Charlotte Riker for property loss. Ma'am? No one else has ever told you or you've never heard that people say you talk too much? Because I've heard it. Well, I mean, uh, it's lively conversation. Everybody... No, have anyone said, ooh, she talks too much? Or I have you heard uh, such as that say, you talk too much, girl? No. You've never heard that you talk too much? No. Your daughter looking like, she looking at you like, she yes, talks you too have, much mama. Sometimes. I've told you. Sometimes. Well, sometimes. Yeah, I know she does. I, you were a little rapid there. You were going a little fast there. You were fast talking. You, so if you're fast talking like that, no, you don't have a chance. You just have to fast talk a little more. Where are you from? New York? You're from New York, and you're from uh, uh, Iowa. So that's the problem. She's a fast talking New Yorker, and you're a slow drag in <laughs> Iowa. Is that what it is? Anyhow, I'm just kidding with about that. Uh, describe the incident uh, outside of that. And you didn't see any indications of her being irritated no. prior to the gambling experience? No, we were just having a good time. Oh, please. Yeah. What did you do to indicate irritated? You got quiet, you yeah. started looking down, you weren't smiling, and some type of... I, I let her know that I was getting annoyed with her. The look on my face, you know, I tried to interrupt her. She would not stop talking. She would not stop bragging. So I just finally gave up. I was just angry. I don't know about getting angry. You could be looking at your watch and <laughs> see how long I have to deal with this. And then the first opportunity you get, end it. Right. But you should have at least gotten home first without this experience I'm hearing about you being asked to leave the car. What happened? Describe that. She just got, went into like a blind rage and, you know, pulled over the car, told me to get out. I was so shocked. You know, I'd never heard of anything like that happening, that you would leave a woman stranded on the side of the road in the middle of the, well, not the middle of the night. But, you know, um, when I got out of the car, I didn't realize I didn't have my purse. And then once I did, she flung it out the window and everything that was in it, because, you know, the purse was unzipped. I always have my purse unzipped for some reason. And everything was all over the snow. It was dark out. So, you know, that's well, how we ended up losing the keys. Yeah, you should sue for intentional uh, infliction of emotional distress, uh, because that certainly caused extreme stress uh, that she intentionally by or should have known knew or should have known by throwing you out in, out of the car in the middle of nowhere without any form of transportation that you would be you would in, you would be traumatized and tell me about the purse though that's what we're suing about keys you want to tell me about that? Your daughter says you couldn't find them in the snow, but you found other things. Tell me about that. Well, I only found my wallet. Since I was, you know, on a deserted, not deserted, but a highway, mm -hmm. I wanted to get off the highway and go to the gas station. And fortunately, you know, they let me hang out there until the rideshare company came. But, um, yeah, I tried. I couldn't see anything. You know, it had fallen into the snow. So 
I just took what I could. I fortunately had All my right. phone in my jacket, so. Well, we'll let her sue her. She's suing her today. You got a bigger lawsuit later. Okay. So you can come back to me. Uh, Ma'am, describe what happened on the freeway where she says you stopped and had her to get out. Tell me. I was tired of fighting to do, just be heard. I just had enough. I just went in a blind rage. And I pulled over right by the exit, and I just said, get out. That was and it. No, something happened to, with her keys and her purse. Oh, well, when, before I took off, I saw that her purse was on the floor. Mm -hmm. And so I She's said, jealous. come get your purse. Mm -hmm. And she's still out there complaining and whining and pacing around. So I picked it up. I threw it out the window. And then I left. She told you to come and get it? I suppose she did. I, I mean, I was just so shocked by the whole situation. But, um, yeah, I mean, here comes my purse flying out the window. I barely had time to react. Yeah, but she told you to come and get it. Okay. You should have. I mean... She didn't really give me an opportunity to open the car door and reach, you know, like I can't reach over the window to get something on the floor. She let the, the window down and hand it to you. That would have been nice. If you'd have came, that may have been what she was going to do. But you didn't come. She was said, come get your purse. And you didn't. I mean, I don't recall it happening like that. Uh, it did. If she saw your purse, if someone Why said, wouldn't she want to get it to you? Because she was so angry, there she wasn't go. giving me a, t a moment to respond. There you go. She wanted to throw it at you yeah. out of anger. Yeah. Or just throw it out of anger. And the result of her anger and outbursts caused the loss of your keys. So that's yes. why you're going to win today. $650. Her, yes. um, her anger uh, and her reaction to her anger caused the loss of your keys. So judgment for the plaintiff. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Claim just is granted. All rise. Judge Mathis has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $650. I feel as if I deserve my $650 because she lost my Mercedes Benz key. I started to feel sort of bad about throwing her out of my car, but now that I have to pay for it, I'm over it. Coming up. What happens when you go over there, sir? Yeah, she showed me all of her sex toys, and obviously I was turned on by that. Which one? Yeah. And I, I saw the handcuffs. I'm like, let's do it. I was going to put them on her, but then she's like, no, I want to put them on you. I was like, all right, fair game. Let's do it. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Mitchell Sable is suing Priscilla Garcia in the amount of $1,000. Mr. Sable claims his girlfriend handcuffed him to her bed while she ran an errand and says he was unable to answer an important business call. State's your name, sir? Mitchell Sable. Ma'am? Priscilla Garcia. All right, and sir, you're suing the defendant for $1,000, alleging uh, she caused you to miss a project deadline? Correct. Start with you. Yep, uh, so I live in Los Angeles. I'm here suing my ex-lover today because I incurred a business penalty after she left me handcuffed to a bed for over an hour, or for an hour. Oh, yeah. she said you ain't had nothing to work with, so after you took <laughs> your clothes off, so she put the handcuffs on you and left. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they do now when you two minute man. Hey, I, hey, I'm good in the bedroom, but apparently she didn't like me outside yeah, absolutely, of it. No, so. she didn't like you at all. You're not good in the bedroom. When she saw it, she handcuffed you and ran. <laughs> you talking about you good in the bedroom. I don't know who told you that. I thought you'd get a hint. <laughs> That's a hint. Rest assured, that won't happen again. But, uh, right, it won't. <laughs> and and, and now that the three million people might see this, it's not going to happen at all <laughs> with anybody. All right, so so we've been meeting up. Since we're uh, talking like this, we can talk like this. Y'all open the door. In the law, when you open the door to certain conversations, then the other person, the other litigant, is able to go into that in a thorough way. So I'm going into it thoroughly. Since you want to come in here and open the door about being handcuffed in some freak activity. Come on, freaky dicky. Uh, what else you want to tell me? <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> Go ahead. So then I was like, where the heck have did you, you been for the last? You didn't know where she went? No, she she told me she had to go, she went to the kitchen to go grab some stuff, and then she went to the corner store to pick up more whipped cream. That's what she told me. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. 
Mathis Court is back with a case of Mitchell Sable, who is suing Priscilla Garcia for $1,000. All right, and you give me some your side. Yeah, so my name is Priscilla Garcia. I live in Los Angeles, and it's true, we met up in a nap. We went out for like three dates before we started hooking up, and then we did it for like four months. He was complaining a lot and joking about that we always do it in his place, so I invited him over. You said, come over here, because yeah. you, you ain't working over there. Maybe things will work better over here at my place. He was in my place. We were having fun. We were playing around. And then I decided to show him uh, my pleasure chest. chest. Thank you. My pleasure chest of sex toys. And he was very excited about it. He picked the handcuff. He decided he wanted to use it. You tried everything you could at that so point. Uh, that it other was regular his idea. stuff wasn't working over at his house. What happens when you go over there, sir? Yeah, she showed me all of her sex toys, and obviously I was turned on by Which that. One? Yeah. And I, I saw the handcuffs. I'm like, let's do it. I was going to put them on her, but then she's like, no, I want to put them on you. I was like, all right, fair game. Let's do it. All right, and, and how right. did it work out? Why are you suing her about it? Yeah, so yeah. we're getting into it, and, you know, we're messing around. She handcuffs me with both sides of her headboard on the poles, and then she's like, uh, give me a minute. I'll be right back. Ah, she ran out on you again. <laughs> she said, this still don't work. I've done everything I can. She said, I'll be right back. I thought seeing the handcuffs on you might uh, give me a little more emotion, a little more interest, but I'm still not interested in that. Yeah, so five or ten minutes goes by. I'm like, where the hell did she go? I didn't hear anything. So then I start yelling for her. I can't hear you anything. You start yelling? So then, oh, so okay. then 20 minutes after that, she still doesn't come back. My phone's ringing. I can't get it. I'm trying to get out of the cuffs this whole time so I can answer the phone. It keeps going off until eventually she comes back after an hour. Mm -hmm. and yeah, which, she went so else, She went somewhere else to get satisfied. I hope you know it. <laughs> go ahead. So then I was like, where the heck did have you, you been tell the You didn't know where she went? No, she she told me she had to go, she went to the kitchen to go grab some stuff, and then she went to the corner store to pick up more whipped cream. That's what she told me. How will Judge Mathis rule? Find out when Mathis Court returns. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. All right, so why are you suing her? So I'm suing her because after the fact, I found out I missed the call, and that added another day to the contract. I'm a construction contractor, which added a $1,000 penalty. I had had been able to answer the phone, and that's the only thing I had that day. So if she had been with me the whole time, I could have been like, hey, can you uncuff me? I got to take this. No, you, 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 you missed that day, and they couldn't answer the phone because you couldn't walk. Go ahead. So yes, I left, and yeah, I guess uh, an hour passed by. It was not my intention, and I said that, and I explained that, and I apologized a thousand times. Right back means an hour to you? you so yeah, we've had enough of this nonsense. You assumed the risk when you went over there and uh, uh, allowed her to handcuff you. And when you put those handcuffs on, you assumed the risk that you couldn't get them off at any point until she brought them off. Your claim is dismissed. Have a good day. All right. Judge Mathis has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. Well, I'm never using handcuffs again. Well, yeah. I hope you know because you clearly cannot handle it. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Head <laughs> out this way. After you. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.